After Root abducts Finch, Reese asks the machine for help. Reese receives a call from a street phone and it spells out some words. He analyzes those words and reveals that it is the method the machine used to give social security numbers to Finch, called the Dewey Decimal System. So every word corresponds to consecutive digits of social security numbers. He gets the name Leon Tao, who is being targeted for stealing money from a gang, and saves him. He threatens the machine that he won't work without Finch. He receives a payphone call again with specific random words. He traces back those numbers to a missing girl from Texas since 1991 named Hannah Fry. Is she root? So Reese and Carter head towards Texas. They question a librarian in a library that Hannah used and find a disturbing truth. The librarian's boyfriend, Mr. Russell, was a pedophile and somehow took Hannah's life and buried her in the librarian's yard. It turns out Hannah's friend Sam Groves grew up as Root. She later traps Mr. Russell into a drug fight which leads to his death. Reese and Carter ensure the proper burial of Hannah. Meanwhile, Root takes Finch to a cabin in Maryland and abducts Denton Weeks to interrogate him about the location of the physical access to the machine. Without a proper answer from him, she kills Weeks and leaves for the train station with Finch. Fusco finds a taped conversation regarding the government's search for Weeks, which allows Reese to locate the cabin. Then he finds out a tap code written by Finch about the train station. He locates the train station and retrieves Finch. Root escapes but calls Reese to warn that she will come back for Finch. She starts working as the secretary of the special counsel. They both get back to the same business, helping people in premeditated crimes. Here, I'll focus more on main events rather than individual incidents regarding irrelevant details. Amidst New York's mayoral elections between Griffin and Walker, the police and FBI are closing in on the elusive leader of HR. Investigative reporter Maxine Angelis tries to beat them to the story and becomes the next number, but Reese finds it challenging to protect Maxine when Finch discovers she is writing an expose on the mysterious man in the suit. Maxine discovers illegal fundraising occurring in Griffin's campaign and writes an article about it. In the next scene, she is seen talking with a cop named Alonzo Quinn, who works in Griffin's campaign. Reese uses an online dating website to get close to Maxine without exposing his true identity. HR runs a gambit to trick Maxine into naming an FBI informant, Christopher Zambrano, Zambrano's son, as HR's leader, discrediting her, while everyone hunts for a ledger containing the names of everyone involved in the organization of HR, Reese, Carter, and Fusco manage to track down the ledger, and Fusco secretly removes the pages that would incriminate himself and Simmons. The ledger names one of the mayoral candidates, Walker, as the big boss, causing his opponent, Griffin, to win the race. However, in reality, both candidates are on the payroll of Alonzo Quinn, HR's true leader. Carter is offered a temporary assignment to the FBI when Special Agent Donnelly returns with new clues he believes will lead to the man in the suit. Reese must protect the sister of a soldier who died in Afghanistan and her boyfriend, an ex-Marine who lost his right arm. The two are trying to expose an executive stealing from a charity for wounded veterans. They plan to break into a safe box in a bank belonging to the perpetrator named Chapel and hand over the money to veterans. The situation gets complicated when Reese, for whom the wounded veterans charity case has become personal, joins with the couple to break into the bank's safe house, putting himself at risk as the FBI closes in on him while Finch is unable to stop him. The FBI arrests four men similar to the man in the suit in the basement of the bank, including our Mr. Reese. However, Agent Donnelly still has no idea who the real man in the suit is. Meanwhile, Fusco hands the Alicia Corwin death case over to Carter. While at the morgue, Carter encounters Mark Snow, who claims that he has been reassigned but is, in fact, being held hostage by Kara Stanton. Another day, Carter handles the case of a murdered man with her business card in his pocket, discovering that Agent Snow is the murderer. Snow reveals to her that he has been strapped to a bomb suit and says that, she, referring to Stanton, is planning something big. Detective Carter informs Reese of her meeting with Agent Snow, and he warns her to stay out of the case. 
she begins a relationship with narcotics detective Cal Beecher. However, Fusco grows increasingly suspicious of Carter's boyfriend, Cal Beecher, who is revealed to be the godson of HR leader Alonzo Quinn. So he follows him. With Reese in FBI custody, Finch poses as a high school teacher to protect the next number, a teenager named Caleb Phipps, whose mother is a drug addict. Caleb himself is also a drug seller, deliberately underperforming at school to hide his intelligence. Finch learns that Caleb plans to commit suicide at the train station where his brother was killed in a train accident. Finch is able to talk Caleb out of it. Meanwhile, Carter somehow compromises Mr. Reese's DNA, which clears him of the DNA test. However, Donnelly keeps all suspects detained by force. He asks Carter to interrogate them in the same way she did in Iraq. Carter begins interrogating four suspects at Rikers. However, John successfully answers, indicating they may have already prepared for such a situation, Finch quickly hacks and updates government databases based on John's responses. Meanwhile, the special counsel is also tracking the man in the suit. They dispatch a government assassin named Hirsch for this task. They suspect the man in the suit is one of the four held at Rikers. To eliminate all suspects, Hirsch engineers a situation and willingly gets arrested. Inside the prison, Reese encounters Elias. Elias offers to help Reese, but Reese refuses to avoid drawing the FBI's attention. Finch bribes a suspect to frame one of the other men, but after another suspect is killed by Hirsch, Agent Donnelly suspects Reese is the real culprit. Donnelly instigates a brawl involving Reese to force him to reveal himself, but Elias intervenes, breaking it up, thereby saving Reese and preserving his identity. Carter interrogates the last suspect to provoke him, falsely identifying him as the man in the suit and securing Reese's release. Later, Reese visits Carter to express his gratitude, but Donnelly arrests both Carter for conspiracy and Reese for murder. The machine informs Finch that the next target is Donnelly, and he attempts to warn him, but a truck hits Donnelly's car. Kara Stanton emerges, killing Donnelly and sedating Reese. A flashback reveals that Stanton, injured from the Ordo's airstrike, was visited in the hospital by a mysterious man named Greer. Stanton agrees to assist Greer if he reveals who attempted to kill her in China. He tells her that the person who sold the laptop to China is responsible for her current situation. Back in the present, Kara abducts Reese, but Carter manages to escape. When Reese regains consciousness, he finds a bomb kit strapped to him. Kara sends Snow and Reese to a secure government facility tasked with developing cyber weapons. Their mission is to steal a hard disk, but it becomes clear that Kara actually intends to unleash a super virus within the US, capable of crippling major networks, including the machine. After initiating the virus spread, she locks Reese and Snow inside the facility and exits. She calls Greer to inquire about the person responsible for her ordeal in China. Greer provides her with a name, which she writes down. Snow leaves the building, while Reese opts to die on the rooftop to minimize collateral damage. However, Finch, who has been waiting on the rooftop for Reese, manages to defuse the bomb. Kara gets into her vehicle, but Snow has already boarded, choosing it as his final destination. The car explodes, bringing an end to Kara and Snow. A flashback reveals the name Kara received as the person who sold the laptop to China, none other than Harold Finch. The machine produces two numbers, Samin Shaw, a government assassin, and Michael Cole, a computer specialist working for the special counsel. They engage in similar work to Harold and Reese, preventing premeditated crimes. However, they refer to their information source as research and are unaware of the machine's existence. The special counsel sends a hit team to eliminate Shaw and Cole because Cole may have obtained information on the machine. Cole is killed, but Shaw manages to escape. On another day, Root captures and interrogates Shaw but abruptly leaves to avoid another hit team from the special counsel. Reese saves Shaw and Finch explains to her that research does not actually exist, 
implying it is the machine. He offers his aid to her, but she refuses. Meanwhile, Detective Szymanski is incriminated by HR so that the head of the Russian mob can be exonerated and provide financial support to HR. Carter questions her relationship and connection to Cal Beecher, as Beecher was the one who informed Internal Affairs that Szymanski was corrupt, acting on information from one of Beecher's CIs. Carter succeeds in clearing Szymanski, but he is later killed, along with the ADA, by HR boss Alonzo Quinn, who makes it look like an assassination by an outside figure. Detective Turney of the Homicide Task Force is revealed to be an HR operative, potentially surveilling Fusco and Carter. Reese monitors Michael Cole's family, where Shaw finds him. Meanwhile, Finch calls with a new number, Monica Jacobs, a high-ranking employee of a technology company called Rylatech. Jacobs is being hunted and framed for industrial espionage by other employees who are secretly working as spies for China and Greer's shadowy company, Decima Technologies. Shaw tracks Finch to the library, where she grabs a list of Root's aliases from the wall, telling Finch she has a new project. Meanwhile, Quinn, who is actually Beecher's godfather, realizes Cal knows too much about his role in HR and arranges a narcotic situation in which Cal dies. The machine gives Finch his number, but it's too late for Carter and Fusco to save him. The next morning, Finch takes a walk around town with Reese, revealing that he has identified Decima Technologies, the company that employed Kara Stanton to upload a virus onto the machine. Our team grows concerned about the machine's delay in producing numbers, suspecting it's due to the virus Kara uploaded. After severing Fusco's ties with HR, Detective Still's case surfaces, with Internal Affairs Bureau tailing Fusco. Carter also delves into Fusco's past. Fusco eventually confesses to the location where he buried Stills. However, upon the Bureau's arrival at the burial site, they find signs of the body being moved. Subsequently, footprints with soil from Carter and Reese's dog shed light on what happened to Stills' body. Throughout the series, flashbacks shed light on Finch's past. In 2001, while developing an algorithm, Nathan brings Finch the grim news of a terrorist attack. Moving to 2006, during the machine's developmental stage, a woman named Grace unexpectedly appears on Finch's screen. Initially dismissing her as a bug, Finch soon realizes that the machine wants him to meet Grace. Their relationship blossoms over time, with Finch even proposing to her. Meanwhile, without Finch's knowledge, Nathan begins covertly saving irrelevant list people. However, Finch grows suspicious of Nathan and tails him, discovering Ingram's backdoor to access the irrelevant list. A heated argument ensues, leading Finch to terminate the backdoor. Nathan threatens to expose everything to the press and invites Finch to meet him. The next day, Finch encounters Nathan, but their meeting is cut short by a vehicle bomb explosion. Finch awakens in the hospital to find Nathan's lifeless body. Evading his fiancée's visit, Finch manages to access the machine and discovers that Nathan Ingram is on the irrelevant list. Flashbacks reveal how the government used Hirsch and a suicide bomber to plan Nathan Ingram's assassination. As the virus spreads, the machine shows signs of corrupt signals. Now, not just Finch, even the special counsel is concerned about this matter. It looks like Decima Technologies of Shanghai wants to destroy the machine. After several days of silence, the machine gives a number belonging to Ernest Thornhill, a CEO who is buying several payphone companies in New York. They follow some leads, but it seems Thornhill doesn't exist, as none of his employers have ever seen him. Finch extracts his own algorithm used in the machine from Thornhill's data, which means as a part of the survival instinct, the machine itself created Ernest Thornhill, or in other words, Ernest Thornhill is the machine and is now under threat. Root contacts Finch, so he has no option but to join with Root. It is revealed that the machine will reboot to defend against the virus, once complete, giving admin access to whoever receives a call. Decima probably knows about this and has also put guards near payphones in New York. Reese and Shaw follow and encounter Greer and his men. 
Greer tells Reese that the laptop Reese had to recover with Kara Stanton from China was sent there by Finch. Finch knows which payphone the machine is going to call and goes with Root to answer, followed by Shaw and Reese to the New York library, where they encounter Greer's men. When the call comes, Root answers the phone, but Finch splices the call to a payphone near Reese so he too can answer the phone. The machine grants both Reese and Root full administrative access and saves Reese, with Shaw, and Root, with Finch, from a number of potential threats. Root and Finch arrive at the Hanford nuclear facility where the machine is kept, followed shortly by Reese and Shaw, the latter being slowed as the machine directs them to rescue people from the irrelevant list. They find that the machine has moved. Finch explains that he planted hidden code inside the machine that would grant it the freedom to protect itself if it was at risk, code triggered by the virus from the Ordo's laptop. Soon after, the special counsel and Hirsch arrive at the facility. Our group leaves the place. For failing to protect the machine, an unknown woman orders Hirsch to kill the special counsel. Meanwhile, Raymond Turney, HR, and Peter Yogorov attempt to kill Carl Elias. They are stopped by a masked detective Carter, who wounds Turney in Yogorov and frees Elias. The episode ends with a payphone calling Reese and Finch. Hirsch is seen talking with the unknown woman, confirming that they received a relevant number. Root is admitted to a psychiatric hospital. The machine calls Root again, asking, Can you hear me? Thank you for watching.